Hello all and welcome back. I hope you're all doing really well. I thank you again for the love and support on the most recent video. Anyway, lots of different news to cover again in today's video about the crypto space. Of course, things aren't shaping up as well as many would have hoped. And we are seeing a slight fall across the cryptocurrency markets with many liquidations taking place. Looking at the fear and greed index, we can see we're now back at a 29, which is in the fear zone, albeit towards the top of the fear zone and not still as bearish as we have seen in the recent past. If we look at the crypto bubbles for the last 24 hour performance, some projects are turning around. On the weekly though, majority of the projects are performing quite poorly. We'll see the leaders dragging down the remainder of the pack. Ethereum down 18%, Bitcoin down nearly 13% on the weekly position. Um, however, this is a sort of, again, for me personally, and maybe many of you, depending on your particular strategy, this is a buying opportunity for many people. So as you see Quant now coming back into that $100 range, sub $100, I look to start adding to my position on that. If we look at HMART, we can see, well, that's Quant again, Hedera, there we go. Um, if we look at Hedera, we're, we're back sub seven cents, which is uh, quite a steal at the moment. That also goes for a lot of the Hedera tokens. So tokens like Source, um, H uh, Headstarter, Dovu, lots of projects built on top of Hedera, Hedera at the moment. have obviously seen massive liquidations as well. And those tokens are currently very cheap. I am looking to pick up some more Source tokens as well as some other projects across the Hedera ecosystem. We've obviously the intention that once Hedera does start to gain some more recognition and we start to see those use cases go live and we see more retail enter the space, a lot of those projects that are building the ecosystem for HBAR and Hedera itself will do very well over the long term. Not only that, plenty of other projects here as well at the moment, which are of great buying opportunity. We've got Stellar or XLM, which is a fantastic remittance solution, which is really good. Spoken about that many times on the channel. Thorchain Rune is another one that I'm quite fond of, a unique use case. BNB is another really interesting one. I think the BNB coin itself will continue to do very well in the future, similar to other centralized exchange coins like Kronos or Crow um, for crypto.com. Obviously, BNB being obviously backed by Binance themselves, which is the largest crypto exchange across the globe, and they have handled many different scenarios over the last 12 to 24 months very, very sort of appropriately um, stayed on the right side of a lot of regulation. You know, they're clearly in it for the long term. They've got a great CEO at the helm, obviously being CZ. And I do think we may see BNB perform very well during the next bull run. So I may look to pick up some of those tokens at some point. So I have dabbled with the Binance Smart Chain in the past, back in 2020 slash 2021, where we saw the ApeCoin run. Um, on the Binance Smart Chain where lots of stuff could get listed for free. However, long story short is that there is a ton of opportunity in the markets at the moment if you're adding to long-term positions. If you're not looking to add to long-term positions, you may wish to wait further as we could see further drawdowns as de-risking continues to take place with a lot of economic uncertainty. And of course, it always goes back to um, something along like this, you know, how high is your risk? For many crypto investors, it might be this high uh, represented by the duck sitting on the edge of a waterfall. Another sign though, or signal again from Michael or Michael van der Pop, um, indicates that we're in an accumulation period for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. He's looking at something called the hash ribbon indicator, which shows a buy signal. And it's the first time since the summer of 2021 that this signal has manifested itself. Now, of course, this probably does say a lot. It could be a time to start building some of those investments, which is obviously what I'm continuing to do. And backed by that as well, a new statistics showing that 26,370 Bitcoin, roughly half a billion, has been taken off exchanges in the past 24 hours. So some of you may remember if you watched my video from a couple of days ago, we saw a lot of Bitcoin heading to exchanges. Normally, that is uh, in order for them to facilitate a sell function. We've seen the Bitcoin price drop roughly 13% over the last week or so. We're now back down at the $20,000 level. And now we're seeing a lot of Bitcoin come off of those exchanges and go back into sort of hardware wallets or cold storage for the long term. So it looks like this could have been some kind of synchronized event that we're seeing across the markets. People are now thinking that this may be the bottom of this slight pullback from the relief rally and potentially we do go higher. And that is why they are pulling the Bitcoins off of the exchanges. But of course, we still don't know. Unfortunately, a lot of this again is being caused by massive liquidations. People don't seem to learn from the 
you know, past experiences of volatility within crypto and they take out these leverage positions and they get absolutely wrecked as a cause. And obviously this drags the market with it. So the crypto market bloodbath leads to over $500 million or half a billion again in liquidations in the past 24 hours. Data from crypto analytics firm Glassnode shows Bitcoin futures long liquidations touching a new eight month high as Bitcoin crashed below $22,000 on Friday. And of course, this is rife in cryptocurrency because taking out leverage positions is incredibly easy due to the lack of restrictions and regulations being placed on the centralized exchanges. And even in some cases, some of these decentralized platforms have leverage positions available to some consumers. The crypto market registered a major slump on Friday, resulting in major cryptocurrencies losing key support and falling to new monthly lows after a prolonged bullish surge over the past month. Bitcoin, which was looking to break through that $25,000 key resistance level, fell below $22,000 to register a new two-week low of $21,747. Ether or Ethereum, the second largest crypto, also surged past $2,000 in the run following from the merge news, but slumped over 6% over the last 24 hours, new weekly low of 1726. Bitcoin future long liquidations reached an eight month high of 84 million nine hundred and thirty four thousand on okx breaking the previous high of 48 million observed on the 5th of may the sudden plunge in crypto market is being attributed to the united states federal reserve expected interest rate hike in september august consumer price index data came out as lower than expected leading to a bullish surge in crypto and foreign exchange markets alike the federal reserve bank of st louis president james bullard said he would favor an increase of 75 basis points an interest rate hike by the Fed next month could lead to another downturn. A similar rate of hike of 75 basis points in June led to crypto market turmoil after an initial price surge. So again, we're playing on those macroeconomic fears. In that last video, though, I did look at the future markets, uh, which were beginning to price in the potential for rate hikes. And it, at the moment, the probability is looking more like it'll be a 50 basis point hike rather than a 75 basis point hike. So if the crypto markets are looking at sort of misinformation and trying to price in a 75 basis point hike, and it does turn out to be a 50 basis point one, we could see some positive momentum return to the markets due to that miscalculation. And we can see here total liquidations over on CoinGlass in the past 24 hours, nearly 51,000 traders being liquidated with the total liquidations coming in at 165 million. This will see after the fall has already happened um, and after we'd already seen half a billion of liquidations. So more and more traders are continuing to get liquidated on their long positions. And the same will be going for some of those short positions earlier in the week. We saw people getting liquidated quite badly. Um, and this just will continue to play out. Unfortunately, this is what is driving the majority of the volatility in the markets. I personally obviously would never touch um, sort of leverage positions in these types of markets with a barge pole. It's an incredibly easy way to get absolutely destroyed. Anyway, enough of the macro sentiment for the crypto markets. Let's look at some Hedera or HBAR specific news. So in a previous video, I looked at Citadel, which is a HBAR hardware wallet. They recently opened a Twitter account and have been showcasing what they are looking to bring and they have finally dropped their website. So let's have a quick run through this. So they are looking to create a wallet from the ground up with Hedera's network architecture and technology in mind. It is purposely built to support Hedera's native cryptocurrency HBAR and all other services unique to the DLT, such as native tokens, scheduled transactions, HCS, which is the consensus service and more. The wallet is meant for everyday users, projects, and even enterprises. So you've got HBAR tokens, NFTs, native staking, HCS, smart contracts, file services, random numbers, scheduled transactions, and miscellaneous calls. Obviously, hello speed. Um, they're talking about here as well. So Citadel Wallet supports a variety of interfaces for different applications and use cases, two wireless protocols, Bluetooth 5.2 and NFC, um, other things as well, so security, display, 1.3 inch high resolution color contrast display, um, some different hardware here. So they've got a microcontroller, secure element story, and battery. Um, and then mechanical aesthetic design, ease of use have been a major focus with the Citadel wallet. Most hardware wallet products in the market have done a poor job in the enclosure with the assumption that aesthetics and user friendliness is not important to crypto users. On the contrary, we have developed a mechanical design compatible with the likes of Apple smartphones and watch devices in order to bring convenience and joy while staying secure. Now, they have obviously got a roadmap with some different partners and stuff on here. Um, 
through from the sort of hardware phase, mechanical prototypes, software pre-orders, and to deliver. I have no idea how quickly they'll be t- turning this around. They've got partners coming soon as well. Whether or not they'll actually launch before Ledger get around to supporting the Hedera token service. Obviously, this is the niche that Citadel are trying to fill. Is the fact that uh, sort of other hardware wallets like Ledger aren't supporting the Hedera token service just yet. I think Decent supports some tokens, but again, not all of them. <clears throat> so Citadel are looking to come into here um, in the meantime. I'll keep you guys informed on that one. Some bigger news from across the space though is LG. So LG obviously being uh, part of the uh, governing council for Hedera and them having previously used the Hedera services to mint NFTs as reward certificates for some of their employees during a presentation. So they have used the service before, are filing trademark applications to offer TV software for issuing and trading NFT. So LG has submitted a trademark application for LG Art Lab to strengthen its presence in the field of NFTs and cryptocurrencies. So the South Korean multinational conglomerate company LG has submitted a trademark application for LG Art Lab in order to further strengthen its presence in the field of non-fungible tokens. According to the trademark application submitted to the US PTO on July 14th, the company aims to provide software for exchanging electronic money. So it sounds like an exchange of some kind. Software for NFT and crypto transaction management, e-wallet payment services, electronic payment processing, software for virtual currencies, digital token brokerages, and TV software for issuing and trading NFTs. The news was shared via Twitter by trademark attorney Michael can't pronounce her surname. <laughs> TVs that issue NFTs, LG has filed a trademark application for LG Art Lab with a sort of ton of different features as we've just listed off there. This trademark registration is not LG's first foray into the new realm of NFTs, crypto, and the metaverse. In May, LG Display announced its collaboration with artist Rific Anadol to showcase his latest AI-driven NFT collection on its revolutionary transparent OLEDs, a cutting-edge panel technology that generates an awe-inspiring holographic effect. So this is actually a major, major trademark filing. We can see here, this is not just for the ability to sort of send or receive NFTs. You've got digital token brokerages on the TVs, software for virtual currencies, e-wallet payment services. It looks like LG are really looking to integrate themselves into this ecosystem. Obviously, Lemonade picked up on this as well. Things like tra- uh, transaction management obviously being something of importance. We can see the recent non-fungible tokens. There are a couple of LG collections that have actually appeared on Hashscan that some people have picked up as well. So that's, of course, interesting. And this ties it back into Hedera. So obviously, part of the governing council, they have used the Hedera token service and consensus services in the past to mint NFTs. We can see LG Art Lab um, being tied back to this LG collection via hash scan. So we can see here um, a series of four experiences interpret and centralize the key elements of the BMW electric vehicle design ethos starts with one the one dimensional calm. The vehicle is formed through the stillness of the visitor. So some different in- information here regarding the description of this NFT, but the image itself is HTTPS art NFT LG art lab dot com. Uh, forward slash artwork so we can see these are all tied back and looks like they are utilizing Hedera for parts of this vision that they've got in place massive massive uh, amount of information in this thread here again more stuff to do with the trademark they have filed new application office supply data in tram so yeah, Lemonade have got have put together a really good thread. Um, what I will do is obviously I'll drop this down in the description for you guys. So Hedera NFT creators, it might be worth reaching out to LG US regarding listings and partnerships. The Hedera NFT space is about to grow by orders of magnitude. This is a game changer, which I fully agree. The service allows you to buy, sell, and display curated non-fungible NFT art pieces with the platform facilitating transactions between the buyer and seller of an NFT. But we are not a party to any agreement between buyer and seller of an NFT on the nft marketplace it means that so uh, in terms of the highlighted word for curated here it means the nft projects will be vetted i.e researched or hand selected prior to being listed zoo's market could be considered a curated nft marketplace in the nft projects must be individually approved prior to being made available on the site 
So it looks like they're doing something very interesting there. However, it doesn't just stop there for Hedera. So you've got the LG news via NFTs, but also Google has just won a cloud deal from Elon Musk, SpaceX for Starlink internet connectivity. Maybe both will be using Hedera in the future, if not already using it. So of course, this is going out on a massive limb. But the idea being is that because Hedera Hashgraph is obviously incredibly low power, low bandwidth, with the potential of 42,000 nodes around the globe, why couldn't one of the Starlink satellites run a node for Hedera? Current satellites for Starlink is 1,200. And obviously then the continued expansion out into the future. And of course, this makes sense for Google themselves because they just invested $1.5 billion into Bitcoin and crypto companies themselves. So Google will be at end one of the biggest investors in cryptocurrencies themselves. I've spoken at depth about their transition from Web 2 across to Web 3.0. They are incredibly serious about this and a massive incumbent like Google themselves knows when to make the transition across to Web 3.0 to future-proof their business model um, and continue the growth for the company. So the US tech giant has poured more money into blockchain and cryptocurrency startups than any other public company. And they are continuing to back that as much as they possibly can going into the future. And obviously they are doing stuff behind the scenes with their cloud services with Hedera Hashgraph. At least that's what it appears to be at face value that we have covered on the channel. Jumping across quickly and looking at DeFi Llama, following the trend of what we've seen over the last couple of days, we've seen a massive reduction again in TVL um, across all of the different major chains. So I'm just trying to scroll back here. Uh, regardless, over the last 24 hours, we've lost another 4%. You can see from the all-time charts around May is when we were at the higher, well, at the sort of high levels for decentralized finance. And obviously that was when Terra Luna death spiral occurred and the majority of the DeFi space has not fully recovered yet due to what Terra Luna caused. It's upset a lot of investors and knocked people's confidence in decentralized finance. However, on DeFi Llama now, I wanted to, to show quickly that we have got uh, source of swap now being listed as a category uh, for decentralized exchanges with the total value locked uh, showing of 13 million. And of course, we've got Stada there with the liquid staking, uh, $44.23 million still locked in the Stada protocol themselves. Before I wrap up this video, I wanted to quickly address a question that I've had by several different people at the moment. Um, and it's regarding primarily from what I can tell, Mac or iOS users trying to access the Stada Labs new website, which is obviously now the standard. And they get this message here at the bottom. Stada is currently only available on desktop. Please access the DAP on desktop. We will be adding a mobile version soon. I've managed to fix this for a few different people. So hopefully this still applies. Um, what this tends to be is something called viewports. And that's just a piece of code in the background that loads the web page. It basically reads your resolution of your screen size and then tries to work out which uh, CSS classes to provide. Anyway, long story short, if you zoom in or zoom out on the page or put the page to full screen mode, this message will probably disappear and you'll be able to use the interface like normal and we'll get rid of this error. It is just to do with resolution. It's got nothing to do with the actual security of the platform or anything like that. They're obviously trying to build a mobile version at the same time and they've obviously got a little bit of an issue with the viewports which is pretty standard for websites. There are so many different screen resolutions nowadays. It's pretty hard to uh, uh, sort of, you know, customize a website for every single different screen resolution under the sun, tons of different mobile devices, etc. Anyway, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, leave a like, drop a comment if you've got something to say. I try and respond to as many of them as I possibly can. And until the next one, I'll catch you then. Cheers.